lesson 12, we're going to go over just a little bit of discussion of using the curve tool and then we'll draw a few components uh, to include a motor and a servo just to show you how that's done. Now what I've done here in the screen is made a copy of the side view of the snapper fuselage so we, we can play with this as much as we want. Notice that for the design exercise we've kept the tail pretty much straight lines just for ease of drawing. What we can do though, once we have that down, if we came, keep the same uh, basic surface areas on the tail uh, or any portion of the airplane it should fly about the same and it's easy to change the shape so notice here for our curve tool we have the spline and the bezier and then the the sketch there's really no hard and fast rule how to use this I think you're gonna find using the spline uh, it's probably gonna give you your best results and, and we'll use that here but again you can experiment Remember, when you use a spline, it's still okay to snap, you can trim, you can uh, split entities, and we'll show how to do that. So let's zoom in on the tail just a little bit, and we'll show you how we can just experiment with a curve to come up with a different shape. We have the uh, spline uh, tool selected here. We have no snaps on, which is okay. And let's just practice. We'll, we'll overlap here a little bit, maybe coming in here. We'll left-click. And as you work with the spline, you'll see how it behaves as it draws points from different ones. Maybe we can just double click there to leave that it like that. And then we can apply perhaps more of a curve to the top. We'll left click here, left click, and you just kind of sketch it out. here, left clicking, left clicking, left clicking, and then we'll double click here. So what we can do now with this is this is the curve itself. Now one trick with a spline curve, um, go ahead, it's selected when I right click and we're going to um, edit nodes here. We left click on the edit nodes. This is where we click uh, or where the TurboCAD has, has just determined a curve point and you can play with this to alter the shape. It's a little bit tricky doing that but it is possible to work with that. We'll back up on that but let me show you how with the trim command we go ahead and clean that up. If we select this whole thing as the cutting edge we can simply left click to get rid of all these lines from before. We'll hit escape. We'll make this the cutting edge. Click that. We'll zoom in here with a scroll wheel. We'll trim that. And we'll escape. Set this as the new cutting edge with a left click. Click to trim. Escape. You get an idea how that with the select tool we could then select a lot more of these lines here. We just delete, take those out, and just uh, left clicking and then deleting with the key on the computer. And you can see that we have gotten rid of all this structure here. And then you could just draw in more structure with the tail if you wanted for the curve. So you see the general idea how, how that works. By the same time, we have a wing, uh, a, a wing that I've copied. This is just an extra copy of the wing. I'm using the scroll wheel to zoom in. We can use the uh, zoom window just to take a look. We'll experiment with a wingtip. This is the wingtip right here. Very good time to use the snap to the vertex because we'll snap to this vertex here. We select the spline tool. We snap to uh, that end right there. Turn off the snap, and just sketch out what might be a good uh, wing tip here and we want to snap to this end here so we will select snap again and double click on the end and there you have an example of a um, of a wing tip again we can select this again uh, right click and we can edit nodes and we might want to pull that up a little bit more like that Oops, I've got the snap on. Always remember to turn off the snap because it's trying to snap to something and we might want to put this in a little bit here and perhaps left click, do this a little bit here. 
you're going to get the idea how to use uh, experiment with the curve tool for things like a wingtip or a rudder or anything like that. And remember when you do one of the wingtips, we always draw half the wing, you do the mirror command, the other command will be just um, uh, just the right right size. Again with the scroll wheel, let's zoom in and just chat a little bit how we can draw a servo. Remember TurboCAD is everything is in full size. So this servo, it's very handy. Let's just go ahead and measure this here. Uh, from one end to the other, uh, it is 0.88 inches. I know that because I simply measured the real servo when I, when I drew this. And so the advantage is when you draw this servo and you save it, you can use it in numerous models. It's the exact size of the servo no matter what size you build your airplane just to make sure they can fit in side by side fuselage. It's really quite helpful to make sure that you have room especially with the smaller electric powered models for what you need to do. So let's just go over a few uh, things that would allow us to draw this servo. And it's really just a bunch of elements we combine together and I think you'll see pretty quickly how we do this. Uh, we simply draw a rectangle. Remember we have the um, an inspector bar uh, and the properties in the lower left hand corner to make it the exact size and then for the the middle circle here is just representational. We can take the double point circle, uh, make that about here like that. And then for the bar, again, we can take another triangle uh, for the server arm. Again, you just measure whatever size it may be. Uh, the fillet tool over here, we'll zoom in with the track wheel. We can click, click to get the curves. And we'll zoom in for the bottom, click here for the curves here for the curves and again this can be done on a half and um, and uh, use the mirror command. For the circles in the servo arms we can just uh, we'll zoom in a little bit here. Oops. I've misclicked the mirror command. There we go. We just have a circle there. Once we get it the right size again uh, construction lines are handy. We might want to select the midpoint so it snaps right here. Escape to get out of that. And we could just put the circle pretty close to the midpoint. And if we like the size of that circle, again, copy, paste, and you get the idea how we can put circles on the servo arm. Notice we have a little um, circle in the middle as well. Uh, so for that one, we can put down another horizontal construction line. We'll snap to the middle of this line right here, escape. Uh, get no snaps. We will take another circle and uh, actually, yeah, no, we'll just do that because we're just um, working here. We'll take that circle and select and we have that right about on the middle there. Let's go ahead and clear up our construction lines. And what we do is we simply trim again. Uh, we will select this as the cutting surface click and you can see that goes right there and uh, notice that if we try to get rid of this middle portion here which we're going to do here if we select this that works out fine and this and it clicks it works out fine because of the rectangle and so you can see how we're slowly building this up we'll go ahead and select make sure we get selected things I'm trying to trim we'll go ahead and select that and just put that right about here. Okay. And then we will go ahead and get rid of the middle line. We'll select this, get rid of that. And we'll trim with this cutting edge, select that. And we'll get rid of this middle point, escape. Trip again, escape. And you can see the beginnings of the server right here. Now, the one final thing on the servo, remember these are all individual um, didn't mean to do that that was a cutting edge let me escape and undo I just wanted to show that with the select tool these are still individual parts very important to select the whole thing and then make it a group and that way we can very easily move that entire servo and you can do the same for a top view side view etc just uh, for your model building activities same thing for an engine. This is just a representational size of an engine. Very handy when you're doing firewalls and um, 
uh, just to make sure the motor can fit in the compartment. And you can see it's just rectangles along here, lines, uh, uh, angle lines, and you just simply uh, draw those portions and you'll, you'll come up with a motor. I'd like to just touch a little bit on the spinner again just for the curve tool one more time to give you some insight as to techniques on doing that. Good thing is to go ahead and turn on the grid. And uh, what we'll do in, in this case is, let me zoom in with a track wheel, we'll draw a line and we'll snap to the grid and we'll have, um, say this is the back of, of the spinner right here. So we'll start up here and we'll go down here. We'll put a construction line. Again, we're snapping to the grid on the middle and let's put a vertical construction line uh, here on the end and escape to get out of that. Now there's a couple techniques for the, for the circle tool and so let's do that right now. We'll go ahead and use the spline curve right here. We're going to snap to this end, click once. We'll go over two grids, click. Then we'll go over here, back to this one, then double click. And you can see by using the uh, snap to the grid function and the spline uh, tool, you get a representation of a spinner. And again, you can experiment to see how you want to do that. We'll turn off the grid. We'll select that again, we'll uh, right click, we'll edit nodes, and you can see that by pulling this out, uh, you get a different shape to the spinner. And again, just experiment to how you want to do that. Again, when the spinner is full size, uh, when the um, spinner is, is, is drawn full size, the motor is drawn full size, just save the whole thing. We'll turn off the grid here for a second as a group. And then you have a full size motor that will um, uh, work as you do your design work make sure the various components, servos, batteries, motors, etc. fit in on your um, airplane. So again, thank you very much for your um, attention during these 12 lessons. I wish you the best of luck drawing your own RC model airplanes with TurboCat. And please, uh, the results of any of your, any of your efforts, uh, send in to the website www.indoorflyingmodel.com and we'll be sure to uh, post them on the website. Thank you very much.